I welcome all the audience and the director of the film, The Last Image. The Last Image had its world premiere yesterday at the Yehlava International Film Festival. It was screened online in the section between the seas. And uh, it's, it's my honor to welcome the director of the film, Judith <laughs> Desar. <It's decent. laughs> I thought I will mess up. Uh, so welcome. Hello. Hey. Um, uh, for the viewers, uh, you are all welcome to ask any question you want, and I will just shortly explain how to do it. Uh, well, you can either type your question, write it down in the Q&A function, or you can raise up your hand and like virtually and then speak out loud. In such case, you agree to become a part of the recording, video record that will be available for the for the festival. Uh, for the, yeah during the festival and now uh, I, I just um, we can we can go directly to the film I'll just shortly read the uh, jury's mention because the film was actually awarded awarded yesterday um, as it, it received a special mention prize in the in the competition between the seas and I'll read a statement just to introduce the film. For its poetic aesthetics in search of sensory representation of a daily and familiar environment, and for its visual creation of a memory that permanently disappeared by bringing glimpses of light in a world of darkness. Well, uh, you did congratulations on the prize. Thank you very much. I, uh, it was a world premiere of the film, so I guess uh, it's it's like the first screening, right, of the film? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just start with a very basic question. How did you come up with the theme of the, of the film? Um, actually, it's uh, been such a long time. I don't really remember exactly, but I know it was kind of, which is a, a little uh, familiar to the situation we have right now. I was feeling, I was looking for a topic that's uh, telling a story about isolation, actually. Um, not just depression, but this, this feeling of isolation. I knew I had the, the story about an astronaut in mind. So somebody who is in a bubble and, and has, uh, cannot communicate in a way with the others. And then I read a biography of, um, I, of course, I don't know his, uh, remember his name right now, but he's a very uh, famous, actually, professor, an Australian professor that uh, went blind in the middle of his life, so about in his 40s, and he wrote a, a diary about this time and everything, and I read it, and it was very, very, very interesting book to read, and actually, there was the point when I thought, okay, this is all these emotions of of losing and it's very universal it's not just about uh, getting blind it's uh, actually it's about letting go stuff and and really being confronted with being completely isolated but at the same time accepting life as it is and which is uh, also for me a topic to say okay it's okay I, I, I am here and I am fading away in a way we have all memories that go by a lot of life goes by and stuff happens like now everything changes and we have to somehow accept it and i think that was the that was the when it started going in this direction and how long did it take the whole process of making of the film from the first uh, idea until the i think i i i got the a, a step Hand, I don't know what it's called, is um, a fund, a small fund from, from the Austrian government for the first uh, idea. And that was in, I think, two or three years ago. And then I developed the idea and the shooting and everything took about a year. And it was so, for me, such a, um, a hard film to make because the topic was very, very intense and very intimate and very personal as well. So I always had to have like uh, periods where I couldn't look at it anymore. It was too, too close to me. And one of the protagonists, um, she's the only one uh, who we can just hear and not uh, see actually. Um, she had, she uh, went blind because of a tumor she had, a brain tumor, I think. 
and she died in the process of, of filming, which was also, I, I thought maybe I should bring it into the film, but then again, it was uh, kind of right for me to have her as a, yeah, a, yeah, also like a remain of, of all the fragments in the film, but it was such, and it, it, it fit into all this process. It was very hard and, and yeah, yeah, difficult at times. Even though we would describe the process as difficult and hard, uh, the, the film seemed very optimistic and like nostalgic and, you know, it wasn't for me a dark experience. That was your intention as well, like to... Yeah, yeah, of course. I didn't want to be a... Nobody wants to... No, no it, it wasn't supposed to be a dark film at all. And especially the, the protagonists I was talking to, they were all very optimistic. I mean, they had their lives changed completely, but they found their their way of living with it. And I think that's my like uh, aim to to not show. It's more a question. I don't know how it's uh, working, but it's a question if if it's possible, if there is there is hope. So you have to just maybe let it go and see differently. That's that's for me the the hope in everything actually to have the changes and maybe you, if you accept them you can see that it's maybe even beautiful the, the way the colors and everything even if it's blurry but yeah that's, that's what I was yeah thinking. I think it works just the way you described it's uh, it worked for me this, this way that it's it's just different way of seeing things and how, how did you find your protagonists how did you search for them have you spoken to more people or? Yes, I talked to a lot, a lot of people. I was, um, I had a, a connection with the, in Austria, we have this, um, uh, what's the English word? Uh, some association of the blind, something like that. And, and I was in contact with them and they were very nice and helpful. And I had uh, talks with several people which were all great and really uh, open people that were very interested. But uh, it was very clear that the four I, I found were just, because I think for me, it was very clear when they told and talked about uh, their, their memories and everything, I, I immediately had images in my head because they, the way they told the stories and the, the pictures, they, how they described it was for me, it was very clear. Um, that I saw all these pictures and that's what I wanted. And so that's why I took them. That was actually my other question. If you had like some images in your head before the shooting and did you, um, did you work with your director of photography on the visual as well a lot or it was your vision and he just did what you described to him? No, it was very interesting to work with Clemens. Um, he was very open and when I proposed the project to him, it was uh, because I, I think you have to be very, um, I, I don't know the English word, what is it? Uh, humble, I think, as a, as a DOP to accept uh, that you make a lot of blurry images and lo lo nothing that's really like, you know, the classical cinematography look, but the, rather something yeah, noisy and, 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 and crooked and not, not right in a way. And he was very interested and he liked the work a lot. So we found actually a way together. I was always saying, no, it's not blurry enough. It really must be blurry. And we went to stuff like, yeah. But a lot of the images, um, like of the, the Super 8 and 16 millimeter, I took myself as well as really like, parts of, of my own memory. So there are fragments of that in, in the film as well. So they're and real amateur. <laughs> and did you, did you work also with like personal archives of the protagonists or they were all your footage or all the footage was yours? Yes, all, all was mine, all was created. So it was based on their memory, but it was um, made up in a way, yes. And since the film is very visual and it's based on, on the images and, and sound, of course, as well, but it's very visual, do you think it's more difficult for the viewer to see it online since the festival had to be online? Do you think it's more difficult to appreciate the experience uh, for, for the viewer? Um, I mean. 
Uh, you mean like in the in the cinema that you can more get into the the feeling? Yes, of course, it's always. But I think uh, every film is like you know has this experience of of darkness around you. But especially for this film, I I wish I had um, the the possibility to to show it in a in this dark room where you really can fall into this different kind of perception, which I which I wanted to create. But in a way, we had. Um, also um a sound mixing for especially for uh for the streaming um uh, especially for headphones because we have uh, our sound uh, uh sound engineer he made a kind of mixing that is a bin no i don't know what's in it binaural sound which means that you're quite into the in 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 the world so which is interesting as well. So we, we took it as a possibility to, to try out something new as well. Actually, so. when I watched the film on my computer, I just wished all the whole time, I wished to see it in, in the cinema. I thought yeah. it was just different experience. Well, and have you shown the film to your protagonist? Of course, they can't appreciate the visual, but it's very based on the sound as well. So have they... Have they seen it? They they saw it. Yes, I I get. I mean, now unfortunately, um, due to this all Corona situation, we couldn't watch it together. But I I gave them the film, and yeah, they were really. Uh, I I loved their their comments. I was uh, nervous, of course, because I didn't know how they react on on this kind of movie. But we we talked a lot during making and shooting, so they knew how my my position was and one of them was really the the woman who was talking at the beginning also she was she wrote me an email which was so touching and and really i she she understood the whole thing and she said yes it's exactly like it is she even had a, a little quote i think i put it in my pr map because it's so touching yeah she said yes it's like for her um this this past and present and then going going on and that's in the in the movie for her another one said he 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 thought it's it's interesting but he doesn't know what it's all about <laughs> he's not about into movies a lot and he says i don't know it it, it sounds a little arty <laughs> but uh yeah again he watched it again with his family and they um translated and audios uh, scripted it a little and afterwards he said, yeah, he's, he's into it. So yeah, it was positive reaction, actually. And could you maybe um, describe a little bit more on process of making the film? Because it, it seems it has a clear vision. Like if you had a scenario and you knew what, what's going to be in the film or if it just uh, if you created it more in the editing room, how was the process of, of, the, of the film? No, at this time I, I because usually I, I work a lot in uh, like collecting material and then putting it all together in the in the editing room and this time I really had a kind of concept first which was mainly this uh, three different layers uh, which one is this memory thing which we uh, shot on, on on a film analog film and um, which we also created uh, this this kind of effects of fading away with cooking it and putting chlorine on it so it was really a fun haptic process to do something to the material and the other thing was to yes to shoot the the, the everyday life of the protagonists but in a way like um, I wanted it to make like blind but not black or something but uh, one of them told me once how it how it looks like um, being blind because the one uh, at, one of them is is like really blind has two glass eyes so he's black blind it's in German I don't know if it's English word and I, I asked him if he could describe what it's uh, what what it looks like to not see and he said it's maybe like looking as uh, with your back. Uh, so it's not black but it's just how you or, or I can see with our back. And then I, I, I got a little a video clip from another one because I asked them to, to take some footage because I thought I might uh, be able to use it. 
and she sent me something and she put the camera somewhere and and was doing something with her hands and i could just see a part of her hand and it was such a weird image and then it was when i realized okay the rest of the picture i cannot see and i wanted to put it up and and i couldn't see so that's how I, how we came up with um just shooting the faces of them nothing else and so we would have to make up all the rest but we would never show the whole image of like the the kids of the other of the the one guy or or the the other situation so you you have to make up all the images actually in, in your head that was the intention yeah so you came up with several ideas during the process it wasn't clear at the beginning how, how the film is gonna look like yeah in a way it was clear but uh when and how much of these layers uh, how they really were into uh, so connected with each other was not 100 percent sure but it was it was a concept there yes to hold on to and uh, in your biography i've read you have studied uh, like literature and dramaturgy and also uh like filmmaking in a class of uh Haneke. yeah <laughs> you think this influences the way you make documentaries that they are more uh i haven't seen your other films i i, I saw you have two more but uh it's it's very conceptual i thought like um, you have a clear concept how how it's gonna look like that's how it seemed to me I was wondering if, if that's somehow influenced by you being a dramaturgist as well and, and having the experience of uh, directing. Yeah, this one, uh, that's more like uh, working as a script consultant as well. So I think this this uh, this urge to have a structure, I, I think, this comes with working now with a clear concept and trying to do it because usually that's not what I am. I usually am was just mixing and putting stuff there like, okay, and now what is it? So this, I, I really have a, a need to try to find a clear concept, but for Haneke, I don't know. It's uh, of course, it was a really uh, major part of my, development and in the first years it's it's long time ago now but we were in the first class of his so the first when he started being professor we were the first uh, year and he was very strict with us so he was measuring us with ha his work actually so he was not seeing us as students but as really filmmakers which was <laughs> in the first year we were more like yeah let's do it and it was tough and it was uh, i mean i know there was one film he said wow that's great you should really be director and everything and the next film i said he is very disappointed i don't know what's happening and i was like oh my god and yeah he could like lift you up and make you a star and then put you down and you thought okay i will never do anything again and i think it probably helped me to find a another way of of telling a story because this realistic approach he always also um, wanted us to learn which is good like he said this is the skills we need if we to work with actors and make really realistic movies and try it, how this work uh, and then we can go on and do stuff that it's more experimental or whatever and I think it, it helped me to to go places I've never been before or because I, I don't know, maybe to hide a little bit from him <laughs> or, or to yeah be a little bit like a father figure when you rebel against it, maybe that, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, and uh, are, you, are you planning another film? Because since your last film, it, it has been nine years, right? Uh, I, I, all the shades of one long night that's yeah. the last one for the last yeah, it's not really the last it's uh, there was one between but it was not very um i don't know we didn't have a lot of um uh, festivals going on with this one which i don't know why actually but uh there was one in between which is called the other side but it's not really had a, a big premiere yet and uh, yes, actually, I am. I am working on a, a short documentary, 
uh, right now, which is about uh, heart transplants. And it's also, again, it's like body stuff. And I don't know why I do it because it's so hard to always see all this. Uh, yeah, you know, this very mm, body things where you see death in the eye in a way. Yeah, and that's what I'm developing right now and two others which are in a state of very early, early stage. And with this film, do you have any other um, like festival screenings already planned? With, with Not yet, things? because I was uh, due to this uh, whole crisis, I was very, uh, we didn't know what to do actually. <laughs> And, and where to go and have not really a, a, a festival plan, but now started to, to have a lot of, um, you know, all this distribution stuff that's going on. And I hope, yeah, we will have uh, screenings soon. Okay, uh, I, since there are no other questions uh, from anyone else, <laughs> I was wondering, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? you would like to say about the film about the process um i don't know i mean but what else is to say um, yeah it was um, i don't know what's interesting about it no yeah i i i think the most uh, the very very interesting working for me was uh, really to work with the film itself. So to to find, uh, because for me, actually, this is kind of a translation process of not just showing blind people and how they might see, because you can not show vision of somebody else, either is blind or not. But it's more about um, translating the the, the the feeling of not seeing to and and to form it like like film and for me this was very interesting process of of working with um, eight millimeter and sixteen millimeter and really having it in my hands and yeah and I feel like doing something really like like you know it's a it's something you can do with your hands and I miss that a lot with film usually is taking such a long time to make a movie from you know the first idea to till it's finished and this was very nice process to finally be there again and do something yeah and have you ever worked before with the 35 millimeter maybe at the in the vienna film academy you worked yes, with we started the... right in the first two okay. years we we got to film on uh, 16 millimeter so I know actually how to do it, but it was a long time ago and it, it felt very nice. And it, everything is so, you know, it's like holy because you just, it's so expensive and you just have this time you have and then it's over. And, and for me, the process of really um, destroying the material was so, such a, yeah, it was really a, a weird process because you have these pictures there and you know, I mean, of course I had them digitalized, but still it's pictures and you just destroy them and you know, this is gone. It's gone. If you're the negative and you make it, yeah, destroy it, it's, it's gone. In this way, it's not here anymore. And I thought this, this direct connection of the image and the loss of of uh, of the image itself was so was so close as it was just on point for me. It was just the, the film itself in a way. Yeah. And how did you actually destroy the film? Did you use some chemicals, or you were just scrubbing? And uh... no, scrubbing wasn't good enough. I had to. I tried many things, and then the best uh, way to do it was to uh, get a positive work copy. And with the positive, I, I cooked it in water. Like really, it looked like a spaghetti when you had it out and all this, this film rolls in there. And then it would, after some time, depending on which, uh, which uh, um, where it was, um, how you say, um, processed, because different uh, uh, institutes use different kind of chemicals. So one would, would start uh, losing the layers at five minutes boiling. Another one took like 30 minutes. I had to boil it for hours. And then it started finally getting one layer and another layer out. And then I 
yeah, I, I had to find the right potent because if you let it in there too long, then it would just, everything was destroyed and it's nothing on it anymore. So this was very interesting and very, it was because you, you get something so surprising. I didn't know what I would get out of it. It was just, I tried it and then I saw it and it was so beautiful in a way. I mean, it was destroyed and it was not the purpose which an image should be, but it was wonderful i loved it i was i was like really euphoric about <laughs> all this process and the other way we used um this um yellowish greenish uh images are with chlorine we put a little bit of this on it and they are also one has to be very very cautious because if you put on too much then it's gone and also on your hands because after washing everything then i got everything on my hands <laughs> very very interesting process yeah sounds great i think i'll have this image of you with the pot full of 35 millimeters <laughs> yeah it's funny i have pictures i think of me like with the glasses and everything and then <laughs> cooking all this film it's really nice it was really fun and you had to find it on your own or you consulted with someone how to destroy <laughs> the film yeah i have uh stephanie weber who from film cope we have a very nice uh, small but very great group uh, film corp which is working with the film uh, analog film and art they are quite famous i think internationally also for really nice experimental films and she helped me so we were together scratching and trying out how i could get this kind of look i wanted and finally the best way was then to to cook and to to chlorine <laughs> all the stuff yeah great well since there are no other questions, I think uh, I will just thank you and congratulate again for the for the special award, special mention. Thank you. And well, goodbye. Goodbye and thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Yeah.